Antelopa is our expert pit reporter, and she is down on the grid with racers. So let's get down to Hannah Pronto. Hannah? I'm down here with Bobby Fong. He's just about to throw his helmet on. Bobby, it seems like you've ironed out some of the issues you've been having earlier this season. Yeah, you know, we uh, my team has been working really, really well this weekend. Uh, I knew we'd be there sooner than later. Um, I'm just going to ride my race. I have no expectations. I'm just going to build from this race and uh, keep moving forward. And I know the team will be there behind me to provide me a motor good motorcycle. Best of luck to you. Thanks, Bobby. Bobby Fong and that Quicksilver Lexan Moto Hudson Motorcycles entry machine as they've been working really hard and Bobby showed some incredible speed this weekend. Yeah, no, and the bikes look pretty good on TV as well, so they're definitely getting the handle on that bike and, uh, you know, he's the kind of guy that if he can get locked into the pace with the front runners, he can stay there with him. We saw him last year in Superstock on a number of occasions uh, be able to run with the Superbike, so we know he's got the pace. It's just a matter of putting something underneath him that's going to make him comfortable. Well, this guy has been on fire since they rolled his Yamaha R1 off the truck. Cameron Bobier, he is third in points on the Monster Energy Yamalube Yamaha factory machine, but he has been on it, no question about it. He enjoys this racetrack, and he has been setting the pace as uh, Tony or Tony Elias working on some things on his machine. We'll tell you about that a little bit later on, but has been chasing as we look at the number one plate. Our reigning national champion on the Yoshimura Suzuki factory racing machine and his crew and his team this weekend, they got to stay in the championship hunt as Tony leads the way with 17 points early on in the season. But a new bit and a new piece on that motorcycle, which we all can see, we're going to talk about it as the race gets going. They're looking a little bit further down the road, Jason, is the Oshimura team than just this weekend at BIR. Well, that's, that's what you do, though. You just continuously trying to advance. And this guy's been doing a lot of advancing. He just looks more and more comfortable being up in the front of the field, does Matthew Skultz. And uh, we'll be talking about him for sure as the telecast continues on. But that's what these teams do, Greg. They're always looking to evolve and get better and make the bikes better and faster. And, you know, that's what makes our sport so exciting. If you've been hanging out with us for the last about hour and 27 minutes, then you know we talked about the battle between factories and privateers. And so two factory riders lead the way as Bobier on that Yamaha and Tony Elias on the Suzuki and then the first of our privateers on the Yamaha. Gerloff and Roger Hayden also the other of our factory squad and then Bobby Fong on row number two. Yep, starting row three, Josh Heron, then Cameron Peterson. Good run for Cameron Peterson, Jake Lewis. A lot of us are thinking about Jake Lewis this weekend, so we're hoping for good things for him. David Anthony, Kyle Wyman, Danny Eslick, round out row four. Uh, row five, Special Ferreira, Bruno Silva, Max Flinders, and then row six, Sam Federico is uh, is back there. So it's good to see some of these guys that uh, have decided to, to make a full run of the year, get a year's experience under their belt, and hopefully come back next year even better. Good to see Max Flinders, the number 88, back in the mix as he had to miss a round due to injury. He has an injured finger from an, a crash earlier on in the year. It's still very sore, but Flinders will soldier on. He qualified in 15th spot. Let's get back down to Hannah who has our Cycle Gear last minute report. Greg, I know you just said Cameron Bobier was on fire, but uh, the Attack Performance Transporter was quite literally on fire last night. Uh, they were able to put up a small fire, not a damage or anything. Everyone is safe and fine, and Josh is good to go for this race. And that is your wow. Cycle Gear last minute report. Okay, thanks, Hannah. We should have to, have to pull out that street yeah. bike again, maybe, no you know? No kidding, man. <laughs> that was, wow. Well, we'll have to find out a little bit more about that. Well, so that's, that's why Hannah's on it, yeah, man. She's, she's on She's definitely it on it, because I had actually not heard that. I'm going to tell you something, man. They have had that, that attack team so far. Their truck broke down right before Coda. They didn't make it to Coda. Um, and I'm it's sorry, to Road Atlanta. Road sorry, Atlanta, Road Atlanta. Yeah. They didn't yep. make it to Road Atlanta. Josh Heron had to ride his, his street bike. And then... A front tire blew on the way here, okay, for, for uh, in, in, in a semi. So in, Yeah, I think in New Mexico, yeah, in a semi, Richard Stamboli was driving, saved it, and now a fire. So it's not that their program, once they're here, it, is a big issue. It's like, man, somebody's got to get rid of that transporter and find something else. <laughs> if I get, maybe just get a U-Haul. Yeah, or yeah. Maybe, you know, maybe <laughs> find some psychic or maybe a witch doctor or something. something. and. And yeah, it's gonna make handled. that. It's gonna make that first win for Josh a little bit more sweet, though, when those guys finally do get that win. I think so. Yeah. Greg White here with Jason Pridmore and Hannah Lopa in the pits as we are getting set for Superbike race number one. As we get word from Dunlop about which tires riders chose, everyone on the compound that we affectionately know as the Rich Oliver compound. It's zero zero nine seven to you out there in the audience who are watching this race on television or being connect, that is the soft option tire. 
Everyone has chosen that tire. So the grid is set for race number one here from BIR. The lights go on and off, and it's the mad dash to turn one. Here we go. Who's going to get there? It looks like Tony Elias. Garrett Gurov, great start. Matthew Skultz, horrible start. Roger Hayden, great start also. He's, he's going to try to slot into third, but it looks like Garrett Gurloff's going to get in there. Raj got kind of ate up once they got onto the brakes going down into turn one, but it's going to be Tony Elias leading the way from Cameron Bobby, Garrett Gurloff, Skultz, and it looks like Bobby Fong slotted his way back in there into fifth with Raj Hayden right behind him. You can see there, and then Jake. Oh, oh big crash! It looks like it was Garrett Gurloff, I believe. Yeah, Garrett yep, Gurloff. Bobby for the Fong, big, Bobby Fong is gets down. caught up in that. Just simply gets caught up in that. Garrett Gurloff high sides. Out of turn four, and Bobby Fong had nowhere to go, ran off the track into the grass, and uh, I'm looking for Raj. Where's Roger Hayden? I, I didn't see him back there either. It looked like he kind of yeah, got, got the red, red flag, flag out, out right away. I could see these guys. I could see there's Jake. There's I see Jake and Josh Heron. Wow. But it looked like there could be three riders back there, Greg. And um, I saw Garrett get spit up over the high side pretty big there. And, you know, it's... We, we don't get to see, we, thankfully, uh, yeah, I can see Raj is definitely down. Uh, he's Raj had a tough start of the year. You can see him kind of crawling right now. Roger Hayden, can, his bad luck continues. So it looks like it's going to be Bobby Fong, Derek Gerloff, and Roger Hayden involved in that incident. As we can see scrolling across the bottom of our screen, information coming from Moto America, as Hayden looks like he is definitely dinged up. Yeah, Garrett went up over the top, and then it looked like the other two guys were kind of scattering a little bit. We saw Bobby off in the grass, and it looked like he low-sided the bike. Um, there's Raj. Raj is up and trying to get his bike started. And again, Raj, this has just been some, some pretty horrendous luck for Raj. You know, for as consistent as Roger was last year. And there's Bobby. He's up, but he's got a left clip on that's that snapped off and you see Garrett's just being attended to behind them. Mm -hmm. He's sitting up so the ambulance is coming to take a look at Garrett Gerloff. Good to see Garrett at least uh, you know sitting up a little bit that's good. Roger's got his bike started so his crew's going to be waiting for him to get back you can see on our TV screens they've already got the body work and things going It's if Bobby can get his bike back the hardest thing is when those bars are snapped off uh, Roger's just having trouble and nah, I think Roger's done actually yeah, this is a real tough one because it's a single bike rule here in Moto America competition for the Motul Superbike class. So the motorcycle that you start on is the motorcycle that you have to remount when they restart this race. You have to restart on the same motorcycle. Part of that is we've seen some, some changes in what happens on hot pit lane underneath those canopies as one of the changes that, uh, that the Yoshimura Suzuki team has made is they actually have like these nets mm. that hang from their canopies and they keep their body work. So Roger Hayden now has to walk away from his motorcycle. Couldn't get that bike started. Obviously there's a big problem with it. You can see him looking at it on the left and we're gonna get a replay. Look at the bike third in line there. Garrett just gets spit up over the top. And both Bobby and Raj had nowhere to go. They're both trying to control themselves. And uh, yeah, they both just went off with a pretty high rate of speed. And watch after you see this high side. The, the problem that Bobby Fong has and, and Rogers, they try to avoid Garrett Gerloff, and great for them is at the rate oh. of which at rate of which Bobby hits the ground. Oh. He's at a straight up and down angle and slams onto the ground. And, and those are the ones that and really those hurt. guys are both going towards the tire. And it looked like what actually took Raj out is is Bobby, once he tipped over, his bike went up alongside those tires and it looked like Raj maybe got into the back of the tires there. So um, yeah, it's a it's a real shame. As we look at Tony Elias in the pits after an incredible start. I mean, I, he absolutely blasted away from the field off that start. It was like as soon as Tony got into second gear, his bike just launched towards turn number one. We'll see if he's able to do that again as Roger Hayden now is going to manually try to get his. If you looked at where Roger was, the pits are actually just in front of him as the bike is now getting wheeled onto the crash truck. We do have a mandatory uh, time period for a red flag, so as the crew here at Virginia International Raceway. The corner workers are trying to get that factory superbike back to the pits so the crew can, of the Yoshimura crew, can get to work on that motorcycle. Yeah, so everybody's just got to kind of stand around and, and wait now. If, if those guys could have got their bikes back, I haven't got the chance to see if Bobby actually got going or not. It looks like they're actually working on Bobby's bike. So I can see them there in the middle of the screen, it looks like, Greg. 
So Bobby was able to get his bike back. They're working on the left side of it right now. And uh, there's Garrett. And Garrett is still sitting up, which is good to see. So red flag conditions as Garrett Gerloff gets attended to. We hope all the best for him. We'll take a quick commercial break here on BN Sports from Virginia International Raceway. We'll get all of this sorted out, come back, and we'll get back to the Motul Superbike class. Stay with us. Okay, we're back at Virginia International Raceway. Red flag is over at this point. All the incidents are cleaned up. We wait to hear what's happening with Garrett Gerloff, but still a full race to go. The laps have been reduced to 20, Jason, as we take a look at these Motul Superbike pilots making their way around BIR on this siding lap. Should be a, should be a quick start procedure here. Let's yep. take a look at the replay that got us to the red flag. If you look at the third bike in the, in the line there, the really strange thing about that crash for me is Garrett was well past the apex. He'd already got the bike stood up. He was really far out of the corner when that bike snapped around. And uh, so this is, this is you're going to see it again here. This is headed down into turn three, turn four. Third bike on your screen. He's up. He's got the bike up off the edge of the tire, and that thing spins up so quickly. And then the other two guys just had nowhere to go. And you can see Bobby tips over. His bike goes to the right. Raj got nowhere to go. And then oh. collect Raj. That's a big hit for Raj as well. Huge hit. That's the first time we've actually seen that. To see Raj walking away is amazing from that one. Uh, I don't think that he got back out of the pits, Greg. I was looking, and I just didn't see him go through. So and there's Garrett. Garrett was uh, waving to people. So that, that's, a, that's a good sign to see, uh, you know, see Garrett at least cognizant up and awake. And mm -hmm. we got Roger's bike back in, but I don't think they were able to get it fixed. So Bobby Fallon did get back out there. Um, so yeah, we're going to do a, a siding lap, and it's probably going to be a quick start. Just get, they'll get one guy out on the grid to kind of show their riders where they're at. Everybody will get lined up, and then they'll do a quick warm-up lap, and we'll be on our way again. But tough break for Raj. Hate, yeah. to, hate to see it. You know, it's like we keep on hoping and waiting for his year to get started and get, get down the right path, and just to be a little bit unlucky like that for both him and Bobby. And we hope Garrett's okay. We definitely hope Garrett is okay. Bum luck for him as well. So as we take a look at the pictures that you have on screen. We also have, just out of our window, the grid. And so we can see there the vacancies left on row number two. <laughs> yeah. There's nobody there. It's, yeah, it's, it's frustrating that is. But, um, you know, these three guys here, it's going to give Matthew a real uh, another chance because he got a pretty bad start there uh, the first time. So. So Bobby Fong is there on row number two, but Garrett Gerloff and Roger Hayden not restarting this race. We don't see Roger Hayden's motorcycle being wheeled down, and I definitely see Roger's crew chief. He's not frantically going, so not sure what's going on with Tony. Stretching. Oh, Bobby. yeah, stretching, yeah. Stretching, and uh, you know sometimes you sit there, especially when you're used to just coming in and getting a stand put up underneath you. If you stand there for too long, you might, you might, be, might have been getting a cramp in his leg or something, so... Uh, it's going to be an important warm-up lap for Bobby Fong right now just to make double sure that everything on that bike is the way he's going to need it when they do go green here in a minute. So he's going to, you can see him back there. He's kind of just, just in front of Max Flinders on that yellow bike um, with Bobby Fong. And he's going to try to uh, probably go up through those S's a little bit faster and make sure everything's good with that bike. But Matthew Skultz, like I said, got a pretty bad start there to start with the first turn, or first time. So this is going to give him a chance to get up with those leaders a little bit quicker. 23 laps was the scheduled length of this particular event. And now because of the red flag conditions, we've dropped three laps off of that. So a complete restart, obviously, since we were on lap number one. Original grid positions taken. There's Bobby Fong. There he is. Danese sponsored Bobby Fong, so his, that's his leather suit. And he actually has airbag built into that suit that was activated. And they're usually good for two deployments, so. Uh, you know, if something were to happen, hopefully nothing will. But, um, but yeah, we'll be we'll be keeping an eye on him for sure. As of right now, it looks like things are are okay for him. So, final look at this 2.25 mile racetrack, Virginia International Raceway. As we're getting set, the riders will come back, take the grid, and then it's it's off and go. So it's going to be interesting to see if the riders can close that gap. The ones that are on row number three. 
Now, if you're ahead of where Garrett Gerloff and Roger Hayden were scheduled to take this grid, you have a nice clear shot in front of you. So 16 riders scheduled to take start in this one, now down to 14. But our front runners, our top three qualifiers, Cameron Bobier, Tony Elias, and Matthew Skult still in the mix. As we are in the final moments before the start of this race, our championship points leader, Tony Elias, takes his position on the grid. Rachel, our grid marshal, clears it. And let's see what we have as we get this race number one back underway at VIR. Another unbelievable launch for Tony Elias. Yep, better start for the whole front row. Bobby Fong fourth. Cameron Peterson didn't have anybody in front of him, so he's going to jump himself right into fourth on that Brewster's Chicken uh, ha uh, Honda uh, motorcycle. And then we got, looks like Heron back there in fifth, but a little cleaner start for Skultz. Genuine Brewster Chicken Hondas. Cam Peterson out of South Africa slots himself into fourth. His best start so far this season. Now we'll get a good look at Cam Peterson and what... This rider in the Superbike class is able to do. Looked like Heron was making a big leap up the inside of him, and he did. He made the, he made the pass, so. Oh, yeah, and when Josh Heron sniffs the front like this, Jason, he can be a bulldog and latch on. You can see Josh Heron, fourth rider on your screen, muscling around his attack performance Yamaha. And it's what you got to do, you know, when you want to get to the front, and Josh has already closed that gap down to the top three. Uh, and, and, you know, he's a little bit like, surprised to see Josh back on the third row for the start. But they're, they're, that bike's a continuous work in progress right now for them, at least for the first few rounds. And uh, right now, these top four guys just kind of feeling each other out as they go up through turn 10. And great to see Cam Peterson hanging in there. Bobby Fong right behind him. So Bobby's just still doing inventory on that motorcycle. Looks like he's going to be okay also. A good look at Josh Heron on that attack performance. Heron compound Yamaha, a new effort for this year. Richard Stamboli, the crew chief. Trailer on fire last night, but they have been able to put this motorcycle together and do really well so far this season. So turn one. Looks like Tony Elias got a nice tight line. He's looking back. He wants to see who's back then. This is what Tony could do sometimes. It looks like he's almost inviting Cameron through almost. It's, he's... For some reason, Tony had a, a lot of looks over his shoulder. He might let Cameron through, but Tony has this ability, Greg, to go from the outside of the track and just drive it straight to the apex, and he brakes really hard to do that, so he gets the bike stopped in a lot of spots. And yesterday we heard him say that it's more like a Yamaha track. It's a little bit more flowy, and and it's, it's more, I think, uh, uh, also the way Tony rides. It's just because he likes to get the bike slowed down and turned. Interesting that Cameron Bobier just launched the front wheel into the air a couple of turns ago. He was telling me in between uh, session number one and Super Bowl that they were going to work electronically on trying to keep that wheel on the ground. As Tony Elias gets a little head shake after doing a little bit of a wheelie. So one of the things I want you to notice on Tony Elias, the number one bike, Yoshimura Suzuki, notice the color of the swing arm. The swing arm is the bit that holds that rear tire to the motorcycle. When you get a good look at it as we come through, you notice it's different color than the frame. It's silver. That's a new bit, a new piece that they got the day after Circuit of the Americas just two weeks ago, or less than two weeks ago, and they've kept it on the motorcycle. It's a little bit... Oh, as Bobier is going to make an aggressive move on the brakes. Usually that's Tony Elias' territory. Look but at Tony turn it right back up underneath him, <sighs> Greg. That's what he does so well. I think he honestly might feel like if Cameron does get to the front, it might be a little harder for him. But you can see how tight he is. Look how tight he is in all these corners. He runs it in there really tight, gets the bike stopped, gives it a big handful of gas. Tips the bike in a little bit earlier there in turn four as well. So you can see that the, the lines are just a little bit different. And Josh Heron has made the move on Matthew Skultz to jump himself up into third. Great stuff from Josh Heron. Watch out. Here comes the number two, Josh Heron. Tony Elias lost the lead for a couple of feet to Cameron Bobier. Tony, the number one in your screen. Bobier, the number six on that Monster Energy Yamalu factory racing Yamaha behind him. Number two, attack performance here in compound Yamaha. And then a rider who's already won a race this year, Matthew Skultz, the number 11. Oh, oh Bobby man. Fong again. I thought I, I didn't see him in the background because I saw him go by Cameron down the front straightaway, and I didn't see him in the background, but that that's why. So now you got Cameron Peterson back there fighting it out with Jake Lewis and Kyle Wyman, I believe, while these front four just pull away ever so slightly. So I'm not exactly sure where Bobby went down. 
On the front straightaway they go. Doesn't look like anybody's in a position to make a big move, although Bobier with some lean angle able to close up, and it looks like it's going to be one, two, three, the same order we had before. Let's go down to Hannah. Hannah, do you have more? Yeah, I talked to the guys from Bobby's team, and when they came in during the red flag to fix the bike, they said they noticed only mostly cosmetic stuff. There was no front fender when he, they sent him back out, so they're not exactly sure what kind of issues he had that may have caused the crash or if it was just an error on Bobby's part or if it was something to do with the actual motorcycle. Okay. Right. And I think that's always a question mark a crew is going to have when they know that they've put a bike back, rushed a bike back together. They're probably concerned that it might be something that they had done, but uh, we won't know that until later, but the good news is that Bobby was up and okay. Okay. So I just want to see how this race is going to play. We got 16 laps to go. Tony's in there a little bit deep, a little wide. Ran. Oof. He actually fell off there yesterday, Greg. And look at Cameron's got a run on him. Yeah, because this that Suzuki got tied up on acceleration. So Bobier takes the lead for the moment. As Tony just couldn't corral the GSXR 1000 with that new swing arm. One of the things the team was telling me that it was oh, Matthew. now Matthew goes underneath the door that was left open by Josh Heron. So Skult's making his move. He may be thinking, okay, now Cameron's out front. He may be trying to check out. So urgency now for the number 11, Yamalu Westby Racing, Yamaha Matthew Stoltz. Yeah, and he was running some really fast times here right from the get-go. And, you know, it's, it's funny because it just looked like Josh was, you know, being nice and patient, kind of waiting to see how things kind of went. You can see he's got back up underneath Matthew as they head down into turn one. But, but Josh kind of saw what Cameron did to Tony. It looked like Josh was being a little bit patient. And Matthew just kind of jumped on him real quick. But, you know, both those guys in third and fourth have the pace right now, these two in front of them. So, yeah. One lap ago, Josh Heron set the fastest lap of the race, a 124.985. Last time by, Bobier was able to do a 125 flat. That's his personal best so far in the early days of this race with 16 laps remaining. We know these guys can get in the 24s. They were 23.9, mm -hmm. 23.7 in, in – uh, Oh, Cameron's in deep now, Greg. Cameron's in really deep. He's going to get it turned. But you can see that they both made mistakes in the same corner now. This is where Cameron turned back up underneath Tony going in and through this X S section. You have to have a lot of trust in the guys you're racing again. But Cameron kind of won that position over. Tony saw him there. And uh, you know, Cameron was able to get up through that turn seven area a little bit cleaner. And that's what set that up. But you can see how close Josh was behind these two guys at this point. So Bobier. Held on to the lead after that mistake into turn seven. Was able to get it turned. He was a little off the apex, but now a drag race versus, well, two privateer Yamahas going after each other right now. Now Malou Westby racing. Behind in the draft is Matthew Skultz. A little bit of a bump there. A lot of riders talking about the, how great this track traction is as Skultz tries it again, but he's going to go wide. Heron turns it and up the inside. And these guys just do that, and look what happens. It's just as these gaps start to start to appear, and I, I'm sure that you know both of them are frustrated with each other. They both know they can run with the front guys. Heron's gone up underneath Matthew in turn one, and, but there's nothing for Josh to do there. He's got to turn it back up underneath Matthew, especially if Matthew runs a little bit wide in turn one. He's got to turn it back up underneath him and go by him. But all it does is create gaps where these two have to put their heads down even more, put a little bit more stress on the tires uh, to, to try to catch back up. Well, Jason, you mentioned 24 lap time. So last time by, Bobier did a 24-6, Tony a 24-7. So a 24-6-3-2. Of course, we look at qualifying times in the Motul Superbike class. You can't really compare those times because they're on those Dunlop one-lap wonders, those qualifying tires. But we look at the times that they set in practice, and now they're right pretty much on pace to where they were in those fastest times in practice. 24.632, by the way, Jason. Just to give you an idea, last year's qualifying time on Qs was a 24.2. So this shows how quickly, how quick this track is now. Yeah, and Cameron went 23.9 yesterday on race tire. So yeah. the track is definitely seems like it's improved. But you know, we've seen this little show before where Tony mm -hmm. sits behind, watches, hangs out, sees what what Cameron does. And I don't know <laughs> of a track more than Virginia that I see. Tony kind of run a little bit differently than where Cameron even runs. Mm. And it's in a lot of spots uh, as far as lines go and how he can take that Yoshimura Suzuki and just put it in little different spots uh, than, than Cameron goes. So, But he always finds a way to just kind of make things and adapt adapt to things, uh, does Tony. So he hasn't let him get away. 24-6-3-1 that time for Cameron, 24-5 for Tony. So if Cameron's able to just start dropping all of a sudden and get down to those 24 O's or 1's or even into the high 23's uh, 
That'll be quicker than Tony's gone on a race tire all weekend. But you can see Cameron's in deep again. He squares it up, but see how tight Tony was to the curbing and all that mm -hmm. going up that hill? He just is able to get that Yosh bike and just put it in a little bit different spots, tighter to where Cameron actually goes. Having a conversation with Daisuke, the crew chief for Tony Elias on the Yoshimura crew. Part of this problem that they're trying to solve, Tony's problem that they're trying to solve with the GSX-R1000, Tony wants more rear grip. And they think that they've solved that with this new swing arm that they're looking at. The problem is they need more time to set the motorcycle up to go race distance. The question is, is that rear tire going to last for Tony Elias or not? Because you're digging it deeper into the pavement and creating more heat and using more of the rubber available on the tire. The converse side of that is the rider in four spot, Matthew Skultz, the number 11, looking at his the rear of his motorcycle. The problem they're trying to solve is a problem that's persisted since Coda, which is it feels like the tire sits on top of the pavement, doesn't dig in, and it just kind of skates across the top as he's driving out. So they, that team continues to work on that. And I've seen so far a little bit of rear tire movement from Matthew Skultz. And now Tony Elias, like you're saying, Jason, we've seen this movie before. He continues to just hound Cameron Bobier and try to lull Cameron into a mistake. And I feel like Matthew's just getting a little frustrated. I know he can run in the 24s as well. He ran a string of 24s. And uh, you know both those guys are just battling with each other back there at the moment. But you, it's going to take a big move, I think, for Matthew to try to do something with Josh. Because Josh is so good in certain spots of the track. And then when they come into the braking zones, he's, he's really solid there as well. Now, the one thing about Josh Heron is he is not scared to fight back. Nope, and that's, that's what you got to love about him for sure because, you know, he doesn't ever accept a position. He always wants to fight back, and that's what you have to do. But it can make it really hard, and it can make it frustrating if you feel like you have pace and you, and you come upon somebody that, 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 that fights as hard as he does. Our leader, number six, Cameron Bobier, Monster Energy, Yamalube Factory Racing Yamaha, comes across the stripe. That'll take us to 12 laps to go. Just a tick behind him is the number one plate, Yoshimura Suzuki Factory Racing's Tony Elias. Josh Heron in third, Ooh. Matthew Skultz Little slide in there. fourth. Yep. Jake nice. Lewis in fifth, David Anthony. Cam Peterson has fallen all the way back to ninth on our timing and scoring screen. We haven't seen Cam come by at the moment, so we'll see what happened to the genuine Broster Chicken Honda as we look on our timing and scoring screens back to our eyes are back on the screen as we continue to watch this battle for first, second, third, and fourth. I don't know, Jason. I mean, you know, Matthew has tried. Matthew Skultz, number 11, has tried Josh Heron, number two, a couple of times. At this point, you know, as you see these leaders, do you really just keep throwing shots at them or just now bide your time? I really believe now that if you're Matthew, you have to think, even if I was to get by Josh, it's going to be really difficult to catch up to the leaders. It's going to take a big, big effort. So. He might be able to settle in and start trying to make a little bit of a plan uh, of what he might be able to try to do with Josh as they get closer towards, you know, the end of the race. He's going to be back studying Josh's tires and making see, see where Josh is spinning up. He's going to start making a plan of places that he feels like he might be a little bit uh, better and, and or worse than Josh. You can see he drives up on him pretty solid there. See that spin? Yeah, and, and he's not close enough to get the draft or go underneath him by the, by the kink here. And Josh keeps it over to the right pretty well, headed down into turn one, and then fans out to the left. So it kind of closes off Matthew's line a little bit. It kind of det detracts him from being able to go up underneath him into mm -hmm. turn one. So it's, it's making it very difficult. All right, so just about the halfway point of this race, 11 to go, 20. Was scheduled for 23 if you're just joining us. And our coverage on BN Sports. Red flag conditions shorten this race as we take a good look at the tire choice is all riders on the same compound for this race. They're Dunlop Slick, soft, soft. The last time that we'll see Dunlop's 250 profile tire, because we get a new tire in the Superbike development for Dunlop motorcycle tires in our next event at Road America. So Cameron Bobier, I, I did see a couple shots ago when we looked at Tony, that he had to look over his shoulder again. I, you know, I don't see Tony look over his shoulder a lot, but he does do it. Yeah, more, well, more than a lot of other riders I've seen. He's getting up, you know, for, for Tony, he, I really never ever second guess anything he does because he shows a very, very high intelligence but as, a, as an actual racer. I mean, he does a lot of things where you can see these gaps kind of start to open up and then all of a sudden he'll just drop two or three or four tenths of a second and pull that gap back in. 
Um, but he's probably just getting the lay of the land of who's actually back there and, and if he's got to defend against anybody. But he's watching his pit board as well as you get back to this battle for third and fourth. And just, uh, you know, 24-6 that last lap around for, for Cam, 24-9. And then these guys are both in the low 25s, 23 or 25-3 and 4 for these two guys respectively. There's Josh getting the thing a little sideways. So these are all little notes that Matthew will be taking now because he realizes that third's probably going to be the best that he can do today. And Josh is just going to keep on hammering out these laps the best he can as well. Very unique motorcycle looking at that attack performance Heron compound machine. You'll notice that that is a swing arm designed by Richard Stamboli. Back up front we go to Cam Bobier. A little tighter line than we've seen him for a couple of laps. Sometimes, Greg, though, at the beginning of the race with the full fuel load and things like that, you run off in there, you kind of use your same markers and maybe a little adrenaline, a little shake of the head there from Cameron in between that transition. But you can run off in there, and it's really easy to get into turn seven a little bit too fast. As we see now on our screen, Greg points it out, fastest first split for Tony Elias of the race. So this is what he does. He kind of just kind of slinkies back and forth and then starts to try to apply some pressure. But you can see... Watching, uh, watching on our screen here, that there's places where Cameron's definitely better, and there's places where Tony can definitely pull, pull the reins back in a bit. All right, past the halfway point, nine laps to go. You can see top speeds as there we now go. it looks like Skoltz is trying to make that move, nope. but he just can't get it turned. And that's a couple of tries now into turn one. And oh, this could be it. I mean. This is where we're going to see the speed of Skultz. Does he have the pace to chase Josh Heron down, even though it's only a tenth or two? And Skultz has he's gone to work on Heron. He's figured out where he's faster. Than, I think yep. that he thinks he's faster in this first split. And the only way to really put distance between himself and Heron is to get by him in turn one. But Heron's just ridiculous on the brakes. Yeah, no, Josh is amazing on the brakes. He always has been. And we saw him here last year making a lot of his moves on the brakes. It's a lot cleaner for Cameron up through turn seven that time. Both these guys really clean. Cameron's bike moving around just a little bit more than Tony's. Like just seeing some little head shakes, like even in this little section last time, that was that was uh, smooth as right there for Cameron. But you can see the bike spinning. Yeah. And this is, uh, right now, it's just created a little bit of a gap up through that top section. But, but yeah, Josh is back there doing an incredible job. Two different swing arms on those two bikes as well between mm -hmm. Skolci and, and the attack performance. And uh, I don't uh -oh. see Josh. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> what happened here? So something may have happened. Um, Skultz is coming down. There's Josh. Ran her off. Yep, but we got to see if he had any. Did he have an assist? Or was it something that maybe he just did on his own? That's what we're going to have to have a look at. Matthew Skultz is not one to shy away from that challenge. We know that for sure. No, neither one of those guys are. And, mm -hmm. and you know, the, the thing is, is it's turn 10 and it's turn 1. Those are our two very primary type of passing spots uh, here, here at VIR. So for the moment, the battle for third is now decided. Matthew Skultz came out of that one. We don't know what happened to Josh Heron in, you know, on the racetrack, but what we do know is that Skultz is in third spot. That'll move Jake Lewis up into the fourth spot. So Jake Lewis back on the 85 machine on that M4 X-Star Suzuki. Having a great run today in four spot is Lewis. It's Jake, and it looks like Heron got, got himself going again, so he's in fifth. Okay. So he lost about 10 seconds on the lap that he ran off, Greg, so 10 or 11 seconds. This paddock, thinking about Jake Lewis last couple of days as his father passed away unexpectedly on a ride home from work, and Jake Lewis came out on social media saying that his dad would have liked him to come to this racetrack and race. And he's been all business since he got here. Mm. Josh is pushing. That's what I like about Josh, though. He, he never stops trying. The guy yeah. rides hard all the way through. And here he is. He's, this is just him off the track at this point. So we don't really Top know. Top of the hill? Is that yeah, turn 10? Yeah, the way that, you know. Oh, there oh. goes. Here's the first shot fired, right? Yep. So, so there was Tony Elias. When we were in our replay, he was giving Cameron Bobier a shot at it. As Tony, very perceptive and smart rider, he can see what we're seeing on the screen, where Cameron's struggling a little bit, if indeed that Yamaha is starting to lose some rear end grip. Tony's trying to take advantage of it. So Cam continues to lead. It's Bobier, Elias, Skultz, Lewis, Heron. Got to give a shout out to David Anthony, Jason, who's in sixth spot right now.
And David Anthony on that Fly Street racing machine doing a great job on that Kawasaki. Kyle Wyman, who suffers from some back pain this weekend, in seventh ahead of Danny Eslick. Sebastio Ferreira, Max Flinders in 10th spot. Bruno Silva and Sam Bernarico. It looks like Cam Peterson is out of this one. Unfortunately for the genuine Brosser Chicken Honda team. Yeah, he was putting in a good run there at the start and he got to see the pace of the leaders and mix it up with those guys a little bit. So hopefully they can get uh, whatever problems they may have had in that race uh, or in this race sorted for tomorrow. But I'm, I'm really interested now to see if Tony starts to ramp up another run. We're going to be coming across the line with five to go this lap by. And uh, he's not quite close enough this time, Greg, I don't think, to, to do anything down into turn one. Sorry, Jay. Six to go. Oh, Six to go on this good. one. I, I'm Where wrong. did he come from? I'm wrong again. Wow. <laughs> and it was interesting as, as Tony tried to get it stopped. Yep. There was a moment there where you saw the chassis just tie itself up yep. and then release itself. And that's when he had to go. And he was, he was starting to lose the front there. Yeah, and now, but see, he's got this ability to be just up off the edge of the tire or just off the center part of the tire and still be trail breaking an awful lot going into turns. And I've seen this for now a couple of years out of him where a lot of people are going to end up running straight or running off the track or, or at least standing the bike upright, taking it to the edge of the track and, and losing a big gap. He doesn't do that. He mm -hmm. has this uh, great feel where he can actually get the bike to the apex of the corner with a lot of heavy trail braking in there and still keep it on track and then go around again. But now Cameron's going to be a little bit more aware of what's going on and wouldn't be surprised to see Cameron tighten that line up into one just a little bit and try to make Tony go down around the outside of him. Change it up a little. Because once you go through that kink here, Greg, if you can get over to the right-hand side of the track just a little bit or mid-track, it really deters that person that might be trying to draft you on the right side from doing anything with you, and you got to make him go down the left. Cameron Bobier working with whatever he's got, and he's doing it under tremendous pressure. As you're looking at two Superbike champions battling it out now with five laps to go. Here's Tony Spot. He's going into turn one. He is deep. Oh, he got it slowed down. Yeah, just, just, oh, he got it a little bit closer. But this is where he's good. He's, he goes tight into this next left, into this next left, and he's got it, Greg. He's actually been able to make the pass. But see, that's... He just will just grind on you and work on you. Look at Cameron's got a great drive. As they go into four, he's going to do the same thing. See if he can turn the bike. Oh, boy. He gets a turn. He does. A big risk from Cameron Bobier. He pays off for the moment. So a lot of fight in Cam Bobier. I love it. It's great to see these guys just fire back off at each other. And uh, and you can see Cameron set himself up. And here we go, down into turn Tony, seven. Tony, he's gonna Tony. Have oh. Cameron gets in here really good, but he's wide, Greg. But this is... He's going to get it turned Ooh. back. No, that's a good move by Cameron. He got the bike turned up the yep. hill. And he checked him up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Tony but thought that that line was going to open up a smidge more than it did. Tony runs wide a little bit in that left-hander, and they're coming up on a back marker. This could be Tony's got to try to get by with him there. Yeah, that looks like uh, Sam Verderico yep. on the Fly Street Racing, number 17. So he gets out of the way from Washington. His first trip to Virginia International Raceway. Rico doing a good job. So up front we go when Cam comes across the line. Laps are ticking away for Tony Elias, but we know what's coming. Everyone knows what's coming, including Cameron Bobier. I'd just like to see Cameron move over to the right a little bit earlier here and uh, and, and just try to block this from happening, oh. even though he's able to turn it back up underneath him. That's what Tony I mean, needed, though. That's the fourth lap in a row, by the way, <laughs> that he's, he just takes shots after shots after shots. And and the thing is, is that if if... If Cameron's either got to try to make an adjustment or Cameron's got to realize, hey, I'm getting in here so deep that Tony's not going to be able to make the corner no matter what. Yeah. And maybe that's Cameron's strategy at this point is to just feel like if he wants to go underneath me, he can, but he's not going to be able to turn the bike because that's what we have seen lap after lap after lap. But there will come a point where all Tony really has to do is get up alongside Cameron. If he can get the bike somewhat stopped where Cameron can't turn in, then it's going to com compromise him just a little bit. But look how good Cameron gets the bike slowed down into seven that lap. Plus, what Tony knows he's doing is playing the mental game with Cam Bobier. You know, sometimes riders on the last lap, if he's trying to force Cam into making a mistake, saying, well, listen, you know, could Cam, if it comes down to that last lap, he takes the white flag, he might go so deep into turn one, he's going to leave the door open. If Tony doesn't feel like he really mm, has the pace wow. to do it, oof, Cam is pushing bike. hard. Yeah, Cam is pushing hard, and that, that, that transition, he's getting on the gas difficult, but sorry about that great Yeah, no, no, point, no, what yes. I'm saying, yeah, all I'm saying is, is that Tony, with his experience, and he's going to try to push Cam into that 
problem. We'll see what happens. So now they're coming across the line. Three to go. Lap times, 25 flats. So still very quick, even through lap traffic. See there, that time there, now Cameron's going to start to think that I get a big enough gap on him down that hill, but you know they're both slipping and sliding around quite a bit. So Tony a little closer in this section. He just is tighter. He just runs yeah. tighter all through that section. He doesn't open up that turn to open up the radius of the corner at all. He just feels very comfortable running around kind of on the, the bottom half of that track going into turn three. It's a very tricky kind of corner. And uh, you can see they're going to be they're ca catching up to somebody else just up the road in front of them. Uh, Max, Max uh, did a tremendous job. Max Flinders does a great job. Mm -hmm. Just moves out of the way for these guys. Former number 888, triple digit, and Moto America did away with three digits in the Superbike class this year. So Flinders taking on the 88 instead of the 888. Yep. All right, so up front we go to Cam Bobier. You can see him trying to steer the motorcycle with the rear end with the throttle. And there, also on the brakes, he sends it sideways. So it looks like Cameron Bobier is really working this Dunlop tire. It's nice and loose, and he's riding it very well. But now the pressure's on, and the drive onto the front straightaway. Man, Tony just like he's close this time. He's too. got it dialed in. He might. He? Let's see if he's really good in the draft here. He's going to be closer. This is going to be an Oof. advantage to him. He's not going to come from so far back. So this might make it easier for him to actually make the corner without running wide, Greg. And that, you know, that's, that's he was it. able. But see what he did there? He was able to just get up alongside Cameron. Yep. That's all he had to do. He had to get up alongside of him and stop him. And this, the, the reason why that was able to happen is because he was closer coming onto the front straightaway that time, and he was closer under the braking zone. Let's see if Cameron has another shot at him. It's just going to be really hard. See how Tony just chops that 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 goes right to the apex. Makes it very difficult to draft somebody like that. So. Now they're going to be coming through on the next lap with one to go. Cameron's going to have one shot at him down into turn one to try to make that same kind of pass that Tony does. The thing is, is that Tony, you can see how tight he runs. He's running tight down into turn seven. Mm -hmm. He'll get the bike stopped, mm -hmm. turned along the apex of the corner, and out. So it's going to make it very difficult. You <laughs> had to look back just to see, you know, he's still right there, Tony. You're not going to get rid of Cameron, I promise you that. Um, there, there's a little mistake by Tony. Run a little bit wide in the left. This could. Give Cameron, you have to see look yeah, how tight he is. He see is. how tight he goes? Yep, and Cameron's going to try it. He's not really going around look the outside, this. or is he? He's going to try to switch it back. Now, this might blow Cameron's drive down at the bottom of the hill. And this oh. is where Tony's been very strong, especially the last lap. So this particular section, how's Cameron going to deal with it? Is he close enough? You can see Tony got a little bit of a squirt out there, and Cameron's going to try to take that Yamaha horsepower as we have the last lap of this race. That Suzuki's fast, Greg. It's I mean, fast. It is really and fast. He's got it dialed Cameron, in. And see how tight he goes? And he's forcing Cameron to try to go around the outside. Now, Cameron's going to try to square it up, but Tony's going to have that bike parked down on the inside of the turn, and he's going to do the same thing right here. He's going to come out of here. He's got the bike sideways, but watch how tight he can go through this left. And then once he gets out of here, if he can get the bike stopped at the apex of this corner and get a good drive out, now he's just going to chop it straight down to the left here. Yep. And, and that makes it very, very difficult to pass. And... Even all through these S's, Cameron's doing everything he can trying to figure out a way to just work away past. Go down this next straightaway, Tony's going to go tight underneath this Nissan bridge and make it very difficult for Cameron to go underneath him there as well. If your heart's pounding, it should be with good reason. Who's going to win this super bike race? Motul super bike class action. The reigning champ, Tony Elias, leading Cameron Bobier. It has been such a scrap at the front of this race. Bobier has maybe two shots, maybe three different shots to try to retake the lead. And he might try to go down the outside this time. He might just try it because there it is. Oh! He's, yep, and Tony's just going to run him wide now. But I, I figured that Cameron might have another go at that. And it's real hard to try to pass someone down this hill. But I think the Yosh bike has a little bit too much legs for even Cameron to try to draft him. He's close, Jason. He's close. But Tony Elias on the gas. Here we go. On to the front straightaway. A good drive by Cam Bobier. He is in the draft. He's going to pull out and try to get there to the flag. Oh, he tried to go around the yeah. outside and not getting it done. So it goes to Tony Elias. He will win this race by one-tenth of a second. The Motul Superbike class. And here comes Matthew Skultz. And Skultz will hold on to third position after Josh Heron was able to get around Jake Lewis. And Josh Heron will finish fourth with Lewis fifth. David Anthony in sixth spot. Right there was David Anthony. Real Tremendous close. job for David. Like That guy works so, so hard, hard, man. So yep. that's great. That's a good result for David. So, so good for Lewis. 0 0.052. Lewis holds on to fifth spot over David Anthony in sixth. Kyle Wyman 
in as much pain as he's been in all week long with some back pain, able to bring it home in seven spot. Max Flinder, San Bernardino will be 10th and 11th because they got lapped. Bruno Silva, who had a problem, he'll end up in 12th spot. Danny Eslick comes home in 8th. So we just await one more bike to arrive, and that'll be Sebastiano Ferreira. And if he can bring it home, he will score himself a very solid top 10 finish in the Motul Superbike class in 9th spot. But it's Tony Elias. What a masterful performance. Jason, you talked about it mid-race. We've seen there's, this movie before. There's and just Tony, things that Tony, there's things that Tony does that are very, very hard to, to defend. Uh, when you have a guy who has the ability to take a bike and, and run so many different places on the track, but more than anything, he cuts the track off a little bit in the sense that he can go a shorter distance because he's not afraid to drive it right down to the apex and he can make the make it work for him, mm -hmm. uh, especially under trail braking. The guy trail brakes so deep and he gets the bike stopped. That's the big thing. Uh, so it takes kind of the flow of a guy uh, like Cameron or, or, or somebody away, but you can see he, were, he was really close here, but all he had to do now is just get up alongside of Cameron. That's what he was able to do. Good shot from behind, and you can see Tony to Jason. The one of the things that was interesting to me on that shot is when he gets in deep, he changes his body position ever so slightly. And you can see Cameron's trying to go around the outside of him here, but it's, bump. But, yeah, but it's really hard to do that because the edge of the track comes up so quickly, and it's very hard for it to draft. Cameron rode a, a, a tremendous race, um, obviously, and they'll, they'll make hopefully they'll make some changes. He'll be able to have known what uh, what Tony might be doing a little bit differently, and they'll. They'll try to come back. Great, great run for Cameron. He needed that race. I think that's the best race we've actually seen him run all mm -hmm. year. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, these guys are going to be trading wins this year as it goes anyhow. Cameron Bovier started off the season at Road Atlanta. And, I mean, yeah. most would deem it a disaster. I mean, he only, he was in ninth place in race number one. He threw his motorcycle down the road three times. He, he did finish second in race number two. And then he went to Coda, and he finished on the box twice. So another podium finish for Cameron Bobier is he's trying to get back that number one plate that he lost to Tony Elias last season. But the Spaniard right now has just got things working, and he and his crew taking the big risk, Jason, I thought, with the new swing arm. When it didn't look like it panned out, he, he ended up after the first qualifying session, you know, kind of way back from yep. where we thought. But they did the business today. Yoshimura Suzuki, they were able to take victory as Cameron Bobier put up quite a fight. We'll take a break. On the other side, we'll come back and hear from the top three. So don't go anywhere. Moto America was presented by Dunlop. Dunlop Motorcycle Tires. Builds the official Moto America race tire right here in the USA. And powered by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. Motul Superbike race number one, post-race action coming at you right now. So let's head right down to Hannah, who's in Victory Circle. Yeah, and no, I mean, I kind of knew that I had the pacer on Josh, but he, he was breaking super late, and it was really hard to get to, to get past him. But you know, that kind of let um, Tony and and Cam uh, pull out. But you know, I'm just really happy that we finished on the podium. Hopefully, the uh, the second race um, tomorrow we can we can try to give something to to Cam and Tony. Once again, thank you to the Lom uh, Yomalu Westby guys. It's been an absolutely awesome weekend uh, so far, and I'm really looking forward to the second race and seeing what we can do. Now, your starts haven't been the strongest for you this season. Today, you did get a pretty good start. Do you think that that attributed to your confidence during this race? Definitely. I mean, uh, I think it was Tuesday. We were actually practicing starts uh, in the, the, the uh, team's cul-de-sac. You know, because uh, that's been a, one of my uh, biggest detriments. So I'm really happy that I could show them that I'm capable of having decent starts. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Congratulations, Matt. Really important <laughs> at this level of racing in the Motul Superbike. Any real, you got to know you how to start so the bike. You put so much work in going and doing a million laps, but if you can't get it off the line, it can really set you back. So good good result there for Matthew today. He got the points he needed to get. Uh, like you said, he kind of felt like he had a little bit of pace, but, uh, but he was able to get that third place today and fight back again tomorrow. All right, let's get back down to Hannah. I'm with our second place finisher, Cameron Bobier. Cam, you fought hard right up until that last turn. Tell us about your race. Yeah, you know, it's frustrating to come up that short. I felt like I led the most laps and uh, 
Yeah, I mean, Tony had, had me on the last lap. I, uh, he was protecting the insides. I tried to go around the outside because he was protecting the insides and didn't work out today, uh, which is a bummer. I felt like I was struggling a little bit with grip there at the end compared to uh, how practice went. But, uh, you know, uh, no excuses. He rode really well. Big thanks to my Monster Energy Yamaha team, uh, Yamalu, Bell, Alpine Stars, Man Above for keeping me safe. And uh, glad I got tomorrow to... Uh, see what happens <laughs> are you looking to make any changes to the bike between now and tomorrow or do you think that you'll keep it as it is yeah you know we might uh, go back and and uh, talk to the teams I'll talk to Rick and come up with an idea for tomorrow uh, yeah maybe get a little more grip at the end of the end of the race and uh, yeah we'll see see but uh, yeah who knows it might rain too so I'm um, ready for anything ready to go thanks Cam congratulations Poor crew chiefs are always looking, aren't they? They're, oh, man, he's going to come oh, yeah. up with me for more grip at the end of the race. Like, oh, yeah. You know, but that team's got a lot of experience in there. You know, they've got the data to be able to look and see where the fall-off points were during the race or yeah. the things that he might be able to tell to the team that he felt like he was uh, needed some help with. So maybe they'll be able, you know, Rick Hobbs will be able, be able to help him a bit. No question as Cam Bovier puts on a great display, finishing one-tenth of a second behind Tony Elias who was able to win this race in fine style, and he's now with Hannah. What a race, Tony. That was seriously an intense battle. You've had some battles with Cameron in the past. Would you say that that was a fair and clean battle that you guys had today? Well, <laughs> when you play like this, uh, you never know what is clean and what is not clean. It's part of the, the racing, so. But I have to say Cameron is the last three months is riding amazing, like never seen before. Today was incredible, this morning had an incredible pace. So we knew if he was leading the race for five laps, he could take some advantage. And we could never come back, but at the end, I played my cars, uh, I blocked him at the beginning. Then I was struggling a lot for five, for five more laps. Then situation become a little bit more easy, tires become old, uh, and start to attacking him. Uh, every time I try, I mistake, but at the end I could pass him, and that that was my strategy. We will see. Maybe we will make um, changes to the bike to find more real traction because uh, that's what I feel I struggle in more behind him. And maybe tomorrow I'm able to play another card, but I'm very happy. Thank you. When he was leading the race, were you watching him to see for certain areas where you thought you might be able to attack and pass him? Um, only only in, two, in two places, but in one place in the middle of the track, always I arrive late. Uh, late I was not close enough. And in the, in the main street, uh, more or less si same thing, but I was more, was more easy at that point. So at the end, I was more closer and I tried to, to pass him without mistakes and it works. And well, it, was, it was incredible. He tried hard also. I saw him uh, next to me many times in the last lap, but congratulations because he rides super good. And tomorrow we will have another great battle for sure. Well, congratulations. Nice job today, Tony. Thank you. Unbelievable masterful riding, Jason. Huh, so yeah. now, you know, totally clean, too. There's nothing dirty about any yeah. of the things that went on. It was totally clean. And with the double header rounds that we have, now the work gets started. You know, Cameron alluded to what he's going to talk to Rick Hobbs about. And I guarantee you that Daisuke and Tony are going to sit down and they're going to be at this track for another couple of hours at least going over the data of the race. And, and tell us, you know, you've been in this situation before after this race one. What kind of things are you talking about in preparing for tomorrow for the Motul Superbike Class? A little bit of everything. If you, you start looking at the data and you start thinking about the things that happened during the race, cause these things sometimes will come back to you an hour after the race. You'll start to go through things. And you'll be able to see the stuff on the data. Things are so much more advanced than when I rode. As you look at the points now uh, with Tony leading, Matthew Skull second, Bobier third, Heron Gerloff, who we uh, hope is okay, uh, yeah. Jake Lewis, Kyle Wyman, Dave Anthony, and Danny Eslick. But these guys are going to go back with their crew chiefs and they'll go through every aspect of the race. They'll look at the lap times. They'll see the consistency. If there was a breakdown of that consistency, they'll work on that as well. Unfortunately for Cam Peterson, he wasn't able to make up any ground on the riders in front of him today. He's back in 17th spot on that genuine Broaster Chicken Honda CBR 1000 RSP2. We, of course, will do our homework and find out what happened to Cam and his motorcycle and see if they can 
make improvements. If he did enough laps to get some data to help develop, continue to develop that motorcycle, you know, we, we often do a lot of work, Jason, and, and had so much information on the Broster Chicken team, genuine Broster Chicken Honda team, they were able to actually go to their the High Plains Raceway, their local track, and do some testing, and they found some great things in electronics, and they continue to get through that program and continue to fly the flag for Honda, and hopefully we'll see Cam Peterson in this particular situation. Yeah, I would love to see him on the podium someday because I know Cameron's working hard as is the whole team. All right, you know, we have another series here that you can see on BN Sports Connect. It's the Liquid Molly Junior Cup, and something happened last time we raced at Road Atlanta. It was the first woman to ever stand on the podium in a Moto America professional race. Take a look at this feature. <laughs> 